I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. Yep. 291, it says here on the show notes. Shooting a podcast, doesn't that... It's not uh, really a podcast. Everybody yeah. says it's a talk show. Yeah, well, shooting a podcast, that would that would indicate a conundrum, wouldn't it? Mm, we are just talking Lionel about... Lionel String would disagree with we're you. We're talking about the best hobby in the world. And here we go. Ready? Oh, Richard's here. <laughs> Let's do a wonderful show. Ready? Ready? Give us a countdown, Richard. Three, two, <laughs> one. The What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading Show is made possible by viewers like you and is proudly supported by Model Railroader Magazine, helping enthusiasts become better modelers for more than 90 years. To learn more, visit trains.com. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show number 291 for October 12th, 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And tonight, after I'm done shooting this show, I'm going to put together the November show. And I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of how-tos and a lot of exciting stuff, like everybody likes to watch stuff getting built. Right on. Right? right. Yep. Yep. So that's going to be fun. All right, so tonight we've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. First of all, I've got, sitting over here, James Regeer. Hey, everybody. Hey, James. On the other side of me, I have got one of my favorites, Brad Joseph. Hey, Brad. Sup, bruh. <laughs> it's good to have you. Bruh. <laughs> you, you have been traveling the world. You've been, you've been seeing some really cool stuff, I and have? I hope you share some of that tonight. Well, I hope I get a chance. I'd love to. I told you this is going to be a great salad tonight. This is awesome. Um, something I wanted to mention, and that's because Joshua and Mike took a trip to Springfield, Illinois today. Yeah. Yep. The and prairie they, capital. They saw Deb Zucker and her wonderful husband. Oh, yep. They were out there. They were there doing a show. Yes. So they were too tired to come back here and do a show. But the fact is they saw the Zuckers out there working it, and that's something that they do when they're going all around the country. It really helps with their getting the word out about themselves. Plus, they saw a lot of product at those you know, shows. Well, and if you order from... Spring Creek Hobbies, and you know that they'll be coming to a show near you, yep. you can save yourself on shipping. That they will do that. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. But what's really kind of cool, um, I talked to Mike this week, Mike Zucker over there, and he said that their summertime show is coming up. Every two years they've got that show, and I think we went to it in 2019 and yeah, well, shot a podcast there. I, I, I uh, stopped by during the show in 2021. It was just amazing. I think that uh, small town of Deshore doubles in population for the It most definitely the show. triples in um, population. You're right. Yeah. Probably literally, I bet. It's it? seriously. Yeah. They have a gas station. Yeah. They have, I remember seeing the show actually on that. It's a hotel there. It's, it's a neat little town. It's a neat little town, but uh, it's like the... The, the streets are absolutely full with people coming for the for the uh, right. for the show as well as vendors. I mean, 
who else could really get soundtracks, get Athern, get get all the all you know, Rapido, all the big names in the hobby into one place in the middle of nowhere at the same time. That's, that's got to be a big deal for yeah. that town. Yeah. That was part of the sales pitch that drew me to that show in 19 when we did it was um, talking to Chris Palomares. He said it's an intimate show where you actually get to oh, yeah. talk to the manufacturers that are there. And it, it was true. It was oh, absolutely yeah. true. So rock and roll, their show is coming up this year, July 5th and 6th. Uh, in beautiful Dejler, Nebraska. It's a beautiful spot. And they also, Mike also told me he watched the show um, and that we were talking about a lot of the tangent freight cars. I know Mike's been buying them and Chris uh, has been buying them. And in fact, I love some yeah. of these tangent cars. Oh, yeah, they're beautiful. He said, remind people that we have got a full supply of tangent cars on our website, Spring Creek. So yeah. check it out. Oh, and you know, when you do go to that show, be sure to stop at Runza. What's that? Oh, it is, no, no, no. What's no, no, that? No. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. What's he talking? Oh. If you like cabbage, Runs is the place to go. It is. It is a. I. No. I, I love it. It's. It's. Uh, it's like you have. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it's who wants a cabbage quesadilla? That's basically what you get. <laughs> a, a cabbage taco is basically what it is. And my friend Steve Goring, his family is from Nebraska, and. Every time we're going out to Wyoming, someone wants to stop at Runza. I make sure I'm behind the wheel all the way across Nebraska. Well, I got snacks in the back. There's no Runza involved. It's I, not happening. I tell you what, you're entitled <laughs> to your own opinion, and you're entitled to be wrong. In this case, um, my opinion is correct. <laughs> it's the only opinion I have that's correct, James. No, it's. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. We actually drove uh, 30 miles out of the way uh, this summer when we went up just to just stop there, and yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a Nebraska specialty. Boy, that, that sounds wonderful. I, that sounds great. There's a, yeah. do <laughs> there's a dog down here. I tonight. know. It's Poochikins. Poochipoo. Yeah. Your dog is here. Yes. The dog with no name. My wife is training Poochipoo. Okay. And uh, by the time I've she had leaves cats tonight, on the show before, I've never had a dog on the show. She'll have the dog doing tricks. The dog probably okay. be able to re-rail the turbine All if right. it jumps the track. Uh, trains. Um, I wrote yes. the word Denny down. Um, that must be Denny Yelsma. Um, oh, Denny. I talked to him on the phone this week because the hurricane, I oh, guess God, it all yes. went south of Jacksonville. So Denny yeah. just told me that they didn't have any damage at the train club or at his house. Thank goodness. He yeah. was lucky. Yeah. Um, I think they did have their electric go out. Yeah. Um, but um, Joshua and Mike, we were talking about this tonight. We were going to hang up some of Denny's jackets in the background because I had to wear it three times uh, already in the last 10 days. And I've been wearing the light uh, blue windbreaker. Oh, yeah. And I was actually going to wear it tonight, but... Yes, it is getting into season I'm, two. I'm uh, start. He's got me all dressed up. So I've got the old podcast sport coat you on You look tonight. great, man, this podcast sport coat. Yes, but you it always look It lends an air of credibility and oh. sophistication. I can, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. I want everybody to think about it. If, in fact, you are wanting a winter jacket, uh, go to Denny's uh, website at Yelsma Graphics. Check it out. Pick out something. Pick out. I love the blue ones. I'm thinking about yellow for next year. You know, if you're making a run to the runs in Nebraska sometime in the next couple months, it gets cold up there this time of year. Yeah, well, it does, yeah. Oh, I'm sure Chicago's cold. We were up there last year about this time when we went up to Lombard Hobbies, and I recall it was pretty chilly up oh, there yes. at this time of the year. So rock and roll, definitely that's uh, going to attribute to the fact that the hobby will uh, gain steam now as folks are starting to incubate back inside where it's warm. I know, right? We're running yeah. a train tonight. What are we running, Brad? We got a turbine running? Oh, we're running the UP3 yeah. unit turbine, the one of the blow. finest pieces of motive power of all time. That's beautiful. That's yeah. not yeah. brass. I think that's scale trains. Uh, scale trains. Um, yeah. Museum quality. Yeah. Those other cars right behind it are those Rapido cars that I've been talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I saw those and I was I loved it. The consist that's running tonight was a consist that I actually had set up, I believe, to run early equipment, uh, 1961-ish, maybe 55-ish, somewhere yeah, in that range. Yeah, yeah. So I could also run those steam engines that I've got from Broadway Limited with this yeah. train. So I checked the dates on all these cars just to make sure I was within the right era. Do you guys do that? No. Okay. No, I, I do it... Uh, uh, it's not you know, I'm stickler, pretty subjective but. about that. I don't put too many 50-foot cars on with uh, 50s vintage motive power. But uh, the last yeah. show we had a really long train running. That was definitely a 1965, 69 concept. This one's 54 cars. I think I counted. Correct. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's neat. Pretty good size consist. But um, it was a good idea too. Joshua made me put up some lights. You see those lights hanging up up over there? Yes. Oh we yeah. Put those up 30 days ago to try to figure out a way to light the track from where that camera sits. Oh yeah. And what we need now is scenery. I actually pulled out my lift out scene that used to be in there that was fully scenic. It's over there against the wall. And the problem with that diorama is it, uh, because it's right at the doorway, you had to really seriously duck under an right. extra four inches because it's pretty thick. <laughs> Mm. And having this three-quarter inch plywood has been working really good, and it hasn't warped yet. But um, anyway, that's the story on the train. A lot of inner mountain yeah. stuff, those tank cars, it, it, uh, Atherton stuff, train miniature stuff, a lot of old stuff. Freight cars is yeah. the way of the world in these days, isn't it? Do, yeah, you like find, yeah. do you find that you still have all the freight cars from literally when you were in your 20s? Because oh, I yes. do. I do, yeah. I do. I run most of them on the layout. I've taken a bunch of blue box kits that over the years I've had, and I cut the the steps off the stirrup steps oh, and put yeah, wire stirrup steps on there they can put drip. maybe a better brake wheel and most people don't notice them unless they're a freight car geek and during an operating session you can't really focus on the freight car you're trying to run the train properly that's the nice thing but, about yeah. those old blue box they sure dress up nicely they and, do yeah. there's no doubt and you know in an hour's time you can have that thing looking pretty nice with a little yeah. uh, pan pastel on there and yeah. ready to go all right, I don't know what time we started the show, and I didn't start the stopwatch, so I have no idea where we're at on this. But, Brad, um, the fact is I've got a computer screen and a chip in this computer, and we're going to show some of the things that you're going to want to talk about. Cool. And then I'll know exactly how long to put the pictures on the screen for the viewers. All you right. know, just picture it. Don't think of it as a video show. I mean, you're not nervous from cameras. I've seen people down here really seriously sweat. Um, just pretend like it's an NMRA slideshow. Yeah, right. right. I get nervous talking in front of people all the time. I, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. shy. It depends on what week it is. Reserved. Yeah, that's, I've, I've, I've observed this about you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, guys, go ahead and launch into <laughs> it. Because uh, the only other thing I'm going to talk about is a spray booth motor follow-up to last week, but I can wait on that. I got two show and tells. Go ahead. But shoot. James has all his stuff. No, go ahead, Brad. All right. The, uh, the first two show and tells real quick. Um, I was time. at Cass Scenic. Bird two weeks ago? Yes. Look at this beautiful shade. It's a Christmas ornament, and it's molded. Okay. But it's fantastic. It's almost like scale. It'd have to those, be pretty close to it. Would that be end scale? Uh, I think it must be pretty close to end scale. But it's beautifully done, man. It's like one of those Hallmark ornaments, but it's not a Hallmark. They also have yeah. a, they also have a um, Climax and a Heiser, which I didn't bring. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It was very reasonable. That's Shea number five, which started running at the Cass Scenic Road in 1905. Can you believe that? Still running every day there. Oh, that's neat. They don't build them like they used to. Uh, this is non-operating. I might, I might. Oh, uh, I was just. I, I was going to modify out and put it. Yeah. Some, put a sound chip in there. I just studied it to see. George the could help me with potential. that. Yeah, yeah. Get the get the little pistons working and all that. Those Shays are really neat. I. I don't remember exactly. I was probably 10 or something like that. We went to the Georgetown Loop. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they had the shades running. And just, I, you know, I, I was sort of used to, you know, the last time I'd run, we were on, we were on the Durango and Silverton. And they have, you know, the standard uh, locomotives on, on that line, just narrow gauge. But the shea, you know, with the boiler offset to the side and, you know, the, uh, the pistons going vertically on the side the of it. The you know, the crank and whirring and yeah, all yeah. the noises yeah. and clanking and clattering. Yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was an experience. I knew we should have pulled a G-scale Shea out and had it running on the table. So here's another um, item I brought just to show and tell. This is a book. It's called The Dining Car. It's a pretty successful novel. It's a mystery. It's kind of a political mystery. And uh, it's about a, a guy who becomes a bartender on a private railroad car. And what's interesting about it, most of the story is set on board this private railroad car, but the railroad stuff is spot on. The passenger car stuff is spot on. The guy's description of the car, and then at the end there's this funeral train that is assembled out of a whole bunch of private cars. And he knows, the guy knows the, the private cars that are running around. He talks about the California Zephyr Dome observation. He talks about the Northern Pacific duplex sleeper and stuff. And it's very interesting. I recommend oh, yeah. it. You don't see much you know, interesting fiction about trains. Brad, what are we going to talk about on these photos? Well, so uh, my best friend Steve Goring and I went to the UK in uh, September last year, actually. And uh, I've only known Steve for 50 years. 
so we don't travel too well together. <laughs> but, uh, man, we had a blast. Well, and he we keeps trying to take over. you to Runza. Well, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. But uh, you're going to have to open that up so I can see what I'm talking about okay. this time again. But I just grabbed 10 pictures. We rode 27 trains in 21 days. Can you see that? Not counting. Uh, yeah, but that's not the U.K. stuff. Okay. And so that would be the in, U.K. file. Yeah, right there here. you go. Okay. 27 trains in 21 days, not counting subways, commuter trains, tramways, stuff like that. Okay. And it was really fun. And I just pulled some that were interesting. The one in the upper left-hand corner there, the green one, that's an industrial locomotive called a Hunslet at a slate mine in Wales. Oh, that's neat, yeah. And uh, that is so cool. Two-foot gauge. And this is the National Slate Mine, Two which foot. is a fascinating That's narrow gauge. Yes, and I mean it's like Wait a little toy. A minute. And you oh, can yeah, yes, you that, got some stuff those there. Those little uh, Thomas Wait the Tank Engine guys. There yeah. you go. There you go. Oh yeah. So I, that's modeled after a Hunslet. I think yeah. I'm not sure, but I think Bachman may have announced a model that doesn't have a face on it. Yes, they have actually. Yeah. As a matter of fact, because this right. would be really cool to model. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is HO scale. It's HL scale, but it runs on, um, I got they call it 009 is what they call it in the UK. It runs on narrow gauge track. That's, that's sort of the neat thing. Like uh, so on the occasions when I've watched uh, Jenny Kirk's, you know, Monday show, yes. you know, she'll be having all these different uh, locomotives. And it's like Thomas the Tank Engine gave us like a cheat sheet on all those uh, British Rail locomotives. Oh, yes. And all that they stuff. did, didn't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. So this, this next picture is at the North Yorkshire and and uh, Moore's Railroad, which is a fantastic heritage railroad. 27 miles of track. They run about 12 trains a day. Um, this is the Repton, which is a uh, 442, a three-cylinder 442, if, I, if huh. memory serves me correctly. Look at that station. Is that crazy or what? That's the station in a town called Grosmont. And uh, there's, there's two tourist towns, Whitby on the east side on the ocean, and Pickering on the west side, which is in Yorkshire, which is a beautiful tourist area. And you can travel back and forth. You can buy a one-day ticket and ride these trains all you want. Wow. Man, is it fun. Uh, let's see. That picture is... Oh, that picture is on top of the highest mountain in Wales, Mount Snowdon. Wales. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which is a separate country. And how cool is a country that has a dragon on their flag, right? Yeah. I mean... Wales has a dragon on their flag. And you'll notice that I'm repping the boys in blue. Yes, right you here. are. No one yep. in Wales had any idea what the boys in blue meant. Yeah. But uh, so that was fun. Uh, this next picture just gives you so an idea. So these are in order on how you want to show yeah, them. Not necessarily. But okay, can we? Okay. So this is, this is the kind of stuff you're riding on every day. You know, oh, my gosh. The, the, the British complain about their railroad service. Yes. Oh, my God, it is fantastic. They've I mean, never ridden Amtrak. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's people complaining on the platform because yeah. the train is two minutes late, and there's only six more trains that hour going the same place. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I tell them about Amtrak, you know, well, there's one train, maybe one train every day. That's only one direction, mind you. Right. On the Sunset Limited. Oh, well, it's it's the same thing in Germany. If it if it shows yep. up uh, if it shows up five minutes late, everyone is upset. Now this is cool. This is back at the North Yorkshire and Moors. This is their engine facility. Look at that coal dock. Is that weird or what? But they actually use that coal dock, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the guys would let us climb up in the cab while looks, they're coaling the locomotives. Looks like the cart would yes, go up exactly the right. system, and, and it dumps and dumps and everything in yep, there. Yep. Wow. So I forget the name of that engine, uh, but that was a. Uh, They've got such beautiful. Now, things. My uh, uncle sent models. my uncle sent me a model once. Uh, it was a Cabri uh, coaling station, and looks very similar. To yeah, that. It looks very similar. It had one of those uh, um, clamshell cranes that yep. would raise the coal up. Yeah, I love their green engines. I, I know, aren't get they a green beautiful? Engine on this layout. So that's a southern locomotive, which is rather. Um, in, uh, unusual, I guess, that we had a Southern Railroad that they painted their steam engines partly green as well. I don't know if there was a relationship there or not. The thing that I love, so this is a signal box there on the right, which is the switch tower and interlocking tower. Yes. But yep. the National Rail Network comes from Whitby over that hill in the background to this town. This is Grosmont. And, and there's like a bridge, or you can see this sort of thing there above the second coach. Yes. That's right. where the national network trains come in. So they still use that old signal box to, to handle the interlocking and all those semaphores mm. 
work the National Rail Network as well. That's wild. With stuff that's like 90 years old. Wow. And you go into there, and they're moving the levers and everything, you know. It is so cool watching that happen. And they got those all over the place. Grab that engine right behind you, that silver one. That Don't ask me anything about that, Ken, because uh, I, this can't, guy? I yeah, can't put it right there on the nothing table. about that. Okay. This is what's got me thinking about this. And i got to send this model back, so I'm not going to be able to show this off anymore. Um, this model from KR Models. Mm-hmm. Something I didn't mention when we talked about it was the size of it was to replicate the exact profile of these passenger cars in this picture up here. Right. Really? Yes. Yeah, because they're all that built to sense. the tunnel size. They're right. all built to the loading Which gauge. Which is small. Yeah. Which is small. And uh, this was this was designed to maximize the space taken up and, and designed for streamlining. Well that makes that yeah. makes sense. It never yeah. really occurred to me, but also Buildings are close to the side of the tracks. The tracks are close together. Everything's close. It's a there's a deal. garden right here with vegetables. Oh right my God, it's next a beautiful garden. Tracks. Yeah, and there's another one on the left side too. There's also a fantastic hobby shop in that town. And and the North Yorkshire and Moors has their own hobby shop. There's a hobby in shop. the engine shed. There's a oh wow. There's a yeah. dog right there. Yeah, it's it's uh, Poochikins. That's a dog. Poochie poo. Richard, there's a dog over here. Do you see that dog? I yep. actually did on my Facebook page, I had a show about dogs at stations in the UK because you're allowed to take your dogs on the trains with you. Yeah. Have you followed the, uh, what's, is it Max the Rail Dog? No. He's no getting, he's, now he's shooting the dog. No, is he over here oh, or is he in boy, the UK? Well, the he's, dog. No, <laughs> he's, he's over here. He he's follows. I met him during oh, the Lord. YouTube meet and greet when we went to see the big boy. Right. Yeah. Um, and he was there, you know, right. and. And he has his own YouTube page that he's of going course, all over the country. Of course, doesn't everybody? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that bridge there, that's uh, west of Edinburgh. That's a famous bridge called the Firth of Forth. Hold on, it's that one right there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Is that cool or what? Yes. And you were there on the fifth, right? It was there. On the, as a matter of fact, <laughs> we were there on I think the fifth. But there's also a very cool Alfred Hitchcock movie. I love Alfred Hitchcock movies. It's called The Thirty Nine Steps. It's a movie from like pre World War II. And the guy jumps off the train on this bridge, not off the bridge, mind you, but right. he's, he's got a mistaken identity, but it's a very cool bridge. It is. And absolutely. you were saying it has its twin uh, going into Montreal, is that uh, right? No, Quebec City, actually. Quebec City. And the one in okay. Quebec City is a little bit bigger, Okay. believe it or not. That yeah. is not the largest one of those in the world. All right, you showed me this one. It knocked my socks off. All right, so that's the what famous Glenfinnan Viaduct in northwestern Scotland. And that was in a couple of Harry Potter movies. They call this the Harry Potter train, but the real name of the train is the Jacobite Express. Okay. The Jacobites were a, a group of people that rebelled against Scotland in the, geez, I don't know, 15, 16, 1600s, I think. Yeah. But is that beautiful or what? Is that cool? Absolutely gorgeous. And when, when I imagine what Scotland looked like, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. And uh, so that was very nice. They run two trains a day. Hmm. So, I mean, it goes over that viaduct four times. I took some other photographs of it, but that was really fun to get that shot. It's beautiful. And uh, it's not running right now. they got a problem with the coaches. The coaches, they want electric locks. You can open the door in every compartment on all those coaches, so they're not locked. You can open the door, oh, the entire okay. door, yeah. not just the top half of it or anything. Uh-huh. Crazy. So, I rate, and then... Uh, this one, this is, talk about crazy. That's is that beautiful. gorgeous or what? That's a beautiful, beautiful color. That's a locomotive designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. How's that for a British name? Yeah. And it's uh, the Mallard, which was the fastest steam locomotive in history, 124 miles an hour, until a newly built steam locomotive called the Tornado beat that a few years ago. But that is really something. That's at the National Railway Museum in York. Mm -hmm. which is a very cool place, needless to say. And by the way, I saw the Queen there, strangely enough. As I was walking across the street to go in the museum, the Queen's Bentley drove by, and this lady waved, and the guy next to me, I turned to the guy next to me, I go, was that? He goes, sure enough was, mate, that was the Queen. And she got to see me, too. So I <laughs> oh, there you go. You know, so, I mean, that worked out well. So her life was complete. <laughs> I doubt that very seriously. <laughs> now, how's that for a logo? A Denny. Now is that how's that, that looks for like a Denny graphics? Be a lot of stitches. Compare yeah. that to like CSX or NS. Which do you think is more glamorous and elegant and stylish? And this tell, this is probably telling a whole story. I, it probably is. Then he'll have that stitched up by Tuesday. But no, in this serious. museum, they got <laughs> hundred. Well, 
maybe a hundred of these plaques, and they're all this crazy complex yeah. and beautiful. So like, those are some pictures from the UK. It's yeah, very different yeah. railroad world. Hobby shops all over the place. They're all very small, and the stuff is stacked to the ceiling, all the way to the floor, on shelves in talk, drawers. Are you talking about Canada? No, I'm talking. Oh yeah, sure. I'll be glad to talk about Canada. I love Canada. Oh, yeah. um, oh, the dog is getting love now. Being a, a big hockey fan, hockey season just opened up. You know, everybody's aware of that, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So Lynn and I, um, I'm a lucky guy. My wife Lynn loves to take Hi, Lynn. train trips. She's Lynn's there down supervising. Here. Hi, Lynn. She's working on the dog training. She's holding the dog. Yeah. The dog's getting love. Yeah. I love the dog. Well, the, she ought to go to the UK with me because there you can take I'll your dogs you on the train. Make a deal on the dog, Lynn. You can have the dog. Deal the dog. Oh, please take the dog. I'll I'll deal with it here on this end. <laughs> but so I'm very lucky because if I want to take Amtrak to LA to visit our daughter wherever, man, she's game. We went to the Cass Scenic. She's game. She loves riding trains. Yeah. Not quite so happy about my book collection though. But so this is Via Rail Canada. We flew to Vancouver in May of this year okay. and got on the Canadian. And if you want to ride the Canadian, you so I'm better clicking do it on soon. a picture here, the first picture. Well, and oh, by the way, you asked me about that book in there I bought. That <laughs> yes, Rapido did a book on the Via. Yes, on this railroad. Yes, yeah. The photography in that book is stunning. Well, I'd like to have it for my collection, but I can't talk about that more with Lynn here right now. Okay, for the book collection. So it's, it's basically like you're getting on the California Zephyr. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Yeah. The cars first, are amazing. Yes. All of Food's those amazing. Bud, bud cars from yes. the same era. They have two different type sleepers. I'll tell you about that in a minute. The attendants are fantastic. I got to tell you about this car? guy. This is a dome car? It's a dome, dome car. car. There were four dome cars on our train. Yeah. This is Bobby, the attendant. I got a good story about Bobby in a minute. All the, all the people that we met love working on the train. Um, and it is a hoot, but they're not long for this world, guys. These cars—they're deteriorating. Uh, they're deteriorating. They're—they're they're structurally. They were afraid they were unsound last year, and they made them put a passenger car on the back of the round end observation. But these aren't going to survive much longer. Now look at here. Here you can only see three, but there were eight. That's right, eight round end dome. Bud built wow. observations sitting in Vancouver wow. Station. Yeah. I Eight mean, of them. But when you think about it, I mean, Holy these things cow. were built 70 years ago. Sure, these were fit. Well, these were 52. Yeah. So, um, that's. Uh, I got to tell you more about that one later. Go backwards a second, Ken. So, for, sorry to do that to for you. For abuse every day since then, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's the uh, the dome cars. I don't know where we are. Hit. Let's look at a different picture. I'll tell you. I got stories to go with everything. You know me. Okay. But um, can you see these images from where uh, you're sitting? Yeah. So let's see. I want to. I want to tell you about uh, this one. So this is my friend Eddie, who I met from Fort Nelson, BC, over here on the left. Yeah. And uh, he makes he makes ice for curling rinks. Okay. So I have a good friend in Medford, Wisconsin, who works at a curling rink. And one night, Lynn and I are getting ready to go out to dinner, and they break into the TV. There's the evacuation of Medford, Wisconsin, there's some sort of chemical, hazardous chemical spill. Well, my friend Mitch was working on the ice plant and slipped with a wrench and broke an ammonia pipe. Uh -oh. And they evacuate the whole town. Well, it turns out Eddie knows my friend Mitch. Now, how's that for a weird coincidence? Oh, yeah. So also, Eddie's a big Vancouver Canucks fan. Well, this happened to be the night the Canucks defeated the dastardly Nashville Predators in the playoffs. Yeah. So Eddie and I summoned Bobby, our buddy there sitting on the steps, and he was plying the party goers celebrating the loss by the um, Predators with champagne late into the evening. Oh, nice. Lynn went to bed. Yeah. This looking out the dome car. This is at Yellowhead Pass, which was the, the main pass on the Canadian National. Years ago, the Canadian ran on the Canadian Pacific. Okay. Nowadays, because it's a via train, it runs on Canadian National. Yeah. But this is the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. That's Mount Robson. Nobody knows why it's named that. It's 12,970 feet. But is that a beautiful scene or what? And, and basically, from the time you wake up, the first morning out, that's what it looks like. This is a shot actually just leaving, uh, not too far from Vancouver. 
Um, I like their paint scheme. Yes, it's yeah. lovely. Four domes. The uh, the F unit or the F forties are very nice. I call them F units. I, this is a relatively expensive train to ride. Well, yeah. uh, the answer to that is kind of. Now wait, I'm going to tell you about that right there. Hold on, this. Right yeah. here? Right there. Okay. First of all, I'll go back. The train was 27 cars a day we were on it. Okay. Sold out. 27 cars. 27 yeah. cars sold well, they out. they only run the three days a week. Super chief three days a week. That's cars. right. Now, you know what this is, right? You guys know what this is, what it's called, do you? It's a sectional sleeper. Open section. Exactly right. Most people in this day and age have no idea what that is, but if they've seen the movie Some Like It Hot with Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe, that's where all the, uh, should I say, hijinks took place was in the, the set open section sleeper. So these fold down at night okay. and turns into, so that's what it looks like at night. Okay, wow. Well, they got these sleeping cars called Manor Sleepers that have three of these open sections, bathroom right, a bathroom at the end of the aisle, okay. a shower here to my left, mm -hmm. and these are dirt cheap in the wintertime. Really? Yeah. Dirt cheap, and I can't tell you exactly how much I don't recall. Now, they also have, in the round end observation, which is called a park car, right. that's a special car. There you get like over a king suite or something yes. like that. Yes, and yeah. that's ridiculously, absurdly expensive. Yeah. Like the tail a couple thousand expensive. a night. Okay. And the average person can't go back in the tail car either. Well, it costs 10 to. grand right. to ride this boat, these beautiful cruise ships that are starting to go up and down the Mississippi. Yep. Um, I think I, just looking at the website, it looked like ten grand was the number oh, that stayed in my head. But that's but also that's... for multiple nights. This is oh, like yeah, over a thousand bucks a night. Okay, a yeah. substantially more than that, actually, because an Amtrak bedroom is a thousand bucks a night, depending on what they're doing at the time. Okay, so going on to your next file, what else? Uh, wait, we right. gotta go Let's back. Wait, we gotta go back to we gotta go back to one more Canadian picture. Okay, and that that's the one with file the, here. We gotta go back to this one. Okay, yeah, we didn't... Do, do, All right, so we, we, we uh, took the train to Jasper, Alberta. Oh, beautiful, yeah. Which is a town yeah. in uh, one of the two most famous national parks in Canada. Yep. Beautiful city. I was there a bunch of times when I was a very little boy. But there was some very bad news because a month after we got off this train, there was a horrible fire. Oh, yes. And about 75% of the town burned down. Yeah. Mostly it was the residential area. So then right behind me is this beautiful main street with all these neat shops and stores and museums. There's a Canadian National dorm just off to my right. Well, that burned down. That was the only railroad equipment that was really damaged. They rebuilt it right away, but they just announced they're going to change the division point from there and the crew change point, and it's a horrible blow to the city because they don't right. have, they can't build anything else there because it's in National Park. Yeah. They wake up. So that's the you got to move that camera around a little bit. Wake up. What's that camera even pointing at right now? Probably the dog. Me? So that's the end is of it. Is it getting all of us? Yes, it is. Okay, good. All right. He looked like How he about the sleeping. dog? How about Poochie Poo? Sometimes Daniel texts and it drives me crazy, but he'll take a nap. <laughs> no. Well, you we're, can't. We're, you can't text while you're napping. I, I don't mean, think. Unless it's AI. To be, be, be fair, half the people watching us are napping. By Will now. you stop <laughs> it? He's James. You are okay. That's next. Cool. He's done. That's all the Canadian ones. Okay. So what's all this? Just stuff? just some quick uh, just some quick cast scenic railroad ones. Quick. Uh, cast scenic is fun, man. It's it's desolate. Where, it's, what part of the country? So it's in eastern West Virginia. Okay. And four and a half miles away is the world's largest radio telescope. And as a result, you have no internet and no cell service there. It's a dead zone. So obviously there's a station. It was an old... That looks like a beautiful station. It is very nice. Yeah. It that was looks an old like lumber the American Model Builders kit. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's it, got it the, could be. It's, it's a CNO station. Yeah, a lot CNO of yeah, style station. Because yeah. the CNO used to run there. So mm -hmm. here's the old company store. And you can stay in the old company houses. And that's what we did. We run a company house. Okay. It cost 139 bucks a night. Comes with three bedrooms. And it is... Fantastic. You wake up, man, to the chaise whistling in the morning, you know. Oh, that's awesome. And putting the trains together, and you hear the night watchman at night shuffling the climax into the engine shed after putting some coal in there. Right. But it's fun. So they run uh, two trains every day. Oh, wow, this is video. Yeah, how about that? This Let's is, show uh, this video. It's got sound in the real world, so they're hearing yeah. sound. Yes. This is a shade going up to the top of Bald Knob, which is about 40. Oh, my goodness. Where's that at? Bald knob? No, I'm hearing the sound. Where's that coming from? Okay. I don't so that's on the TV. That was on that's the on the TV. Yeah. yeah, okay. 
I, so uh, up to 11% grades, they're going up. Have the sound card they're using in those locomotives. Yeah, I know. It sounds just like, it <laughs> yeah. sounds, sounds gonna, a lot better I'm than Broadway gonna, Limited. Just play it without me messing it up this time. They're actually hearing the sound as we're shooting yeah. this right yeah. now. Now this was my scene. How did you this film this? Said. That's I was that, leaning up against the back the back of the passenger car. Oh, so you're on the passenger I'm car. I'm on the okay. passenger car. And what I got, a great I got, vantage point. I know. They always because of the steep grades, they always keep the engine behind the passenger cars. Okay, that was really so cool. we go up three different switchbacks up to about forty seven hundred feet, mm -hmm. and it is it is a thrill riding a Shea. That's some of the scenery. It was very cloudy and rainy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, but we were getting some fall colors there. Uh, let's see. That is called Whitaker Station, where they have a old logging camp museum set up with wow. old logging equipment oh, nice. there, I and they got a snack bar the there actually. Colors. But isn't that cool? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So they stop there for about twenty-five minutes or so and let you wander around aimlessly. Okay. Now that's a Pacific Coast Shea, old number two, but they have a Shea there. I mentioned it before, number five. That started running there in 1905. That road ran almost continuously. It stopped running in 1960, and the state took it over in 1963. But there were a few runs in those few years. In between Bach there. I think Bachman made that cast scenic railroad in HO scale. That engine. I think that's the engine I, I photographed about 18 years ago. It was. Well, Lee Riley. Yes. Who was the president of yes, Bachman for a long time, was very him. heavily involved with the Mountain States Logging Association. Oh my God, I'm smiling. You just yeah. said the man. Lee Riley, we loved you so much. You're such a great guy. You did some amazing stuff for yes, Bachman he Industries. Did. He did AHM, the AHM stuff a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. He custom painted a bunch of brass locomotives my dad bought from Pro Custom Hobbies. Wow. So way back in the olden days. That was good that you but brought yeah, that. Yeah, so this is, this is uh, a very, very nice place. It's a is lot of fun. Is this a video here, too? That's a video, too. Uh, this one. Oh, I can hear this in the headphones. Yep. Right yep. Right. This is out the window where we had breakfast in the restaurant every morning. That was a tough pill to swallow. Right. That was cool. So this train is the Durban Flyer. that goes from Cass about 15 miles along the Greenbrier River. The Greenbrier River that the, the CNO locomotive, the Greenbrier, was named for, mm -hmm. to this little town of Durban, and that was just all rebuilt. Um, this has only been running a couple years since it was rebuilt. I think they finished it like about pandemic time, and it didn't run very long before the pandemic. What else we got's interesting there? Ah, I like I like I like all the Halloween decorations and stuff. Yeah. When I go out rail fanning, a lot of times <coughs> I take like a fake scarecrow and a pumpkin yeah. with me to set them up, but those are their decorations. And that's going along the Greenbrier River. So this was actually a passenger train, and they had an RPO car with open doors in the RPO car. RPO car. Yeah, now look at here. Here I was leaning over the side. Nice. And look at all that stuff spinning oh, and everything. Is that wild or what? Yes. Yeah, that's wild, yeah. You can't take your eyes off. It's mesmerizing. And the thing is, people are not rail fans. I mean, that's interesting as heck to people. That's enough pictures. You got painted people on the table tonight. Well, so, uh, yeah, this last RPM meet, um, I, uh, Bernard, Bernard Helen was kind enough to offer uh, to scan. Uh, Allison and my daughter, Ren and daughter Renata offered to uh, scan my youngest daughter, too, but she, uh, standing still for five minutes was not quite her thing yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, so uh, they, they scanned Where the... Where did you uh, get... So did uh, Mini Prince do this? Well, they, they, uh, Bernard sent me the files, so okay, you can, so he scanned that's, them. that's an option. Anytime you get scanned, you well, can get the cool. files so that you can so I print can yourself. See them. So these are actually scaled uh, to fit with a nativity set that we have. And so I just thought we could Good uh, job. <laughs> Very be part cool. of that. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've also printed them out in HO scale, but it's, it is kind of, it was kind of uh, neat this last week. I finally got them painted and all that. And, uh. Good More or less job, what they were wearing man. that day. Um, That's good. Yeah. How neat. Yeah. I know. You you need to get scanned. So I now we've got a them. box of stuff from Menard up, it, upstairs to show next it, week on the show. It doesn't hurt much. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, know, I gotta right? think about that. Yeah. Oh, 
Uh, I'm afraid those scanners are used to control the weather or something. I'm pulling a pack of cigarettes out of my pocket. I yeah, saw a Prazier guy that looked like that, and he was my favorite guy that I would use for all of the Athern photos and the various shots where I needed a guy on the front of the locomotive. That's cool. And he was he looked like he was pulling out a pack of cigarettes. So I said, I want it, that's what I want to do. The last one we yeah. had, I was um, holding a notepad in my hand, looking official. No, you don't have your sport coat on there. That's like yeah. a, Joshua's got a arms this time. Yep, very yep, good. That's right. Oh, and that's quite the hairdo Joshua's sporting there. There's Holly. Yes. I know. How cool is that? I've never had a model of a girlfriend before. Have you had a model for a girlfriend? I'm just, this is all new territory. So, yeah. I know, right? Um, <laughs> There is, uh, you got some 3D printed cars on the table. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna grab a prop real quick while you talk about that. So yeah, these are uh, these are 3D printed uh, Model T inspired cars. Um, this is a uh, Model T pickup truck. It has a tailgate that actually uh, is hinged. Um, so like, there's there's no glue required. It just clips onto the back. I was skeptical of that until he showed me. Yeah, it it actually. <laughs> Is hinged, and I was like, uh, I've, I've just, you know, when I designed, when I designed the combines, I made it so that you could sort of move the auger open and closed on a hinge, and so I've been experimenting with that kind of thing, um, just how to make the 3D models sort of mechanically functional uh, to a limited degree. Um, here's the uh, fire truck I had last week uh, painted, it's painted up. Painted now. Yeah. Nice. Um, so it's. Uh, a, uh, Are you able to get that, Richard? Does that look good? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's good. So I don't need to shoot B-roll of that. So and uh, yeah, and this is actually a uh, this this Model T here is one that uh, my daughter painted for me for a Father's Day present. Oh. That uh, she did a nice patina job on it. I thought looks um, like something from American Graffiti. Yeah, yeah, um, but uh, yeah, so. Those those are available now, and uh, I'm, I will be going up to uh, I will be going up to Train Fest in Milwaukee. Just booked the hotel uh, reservations today, so hope to meet a bunch of people train up there. Ah, yeah. Train Fest. Yeah, yes. it's it's back. It's supposed to be bigger than ever. Um, it's in a larger uh, center than the state fairgrounds. Now it's in the Baird Center, which is closer to downtown. It's supposed to have better access to uh, hotels, parking. Uh, the whole the whole gamut. So hopefully, hopefully it's a success because that was a great show when it was running. No kidding, it was fantastic. I've never been to Amherst, but uh, for me Amherst that is that uh, Amherst is that was the Amherst for me. Time. Amherst is overwhelming. You should yeah. you should go there at least once. It's on my list. I got a long list though. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Or I'm, fortunately. I know there's case, just maybe. a dog down here. Um, I'm going to do a quick follow-up to last week's show when I talked about the spray booth, uh, spray booth, when I talked about moving the motor from the spray booth outside, okay? Yeah. That was pretty comprehensive. That first four or six minutes, I think it took like two hours to edit that. Yeah. And the rest of the show was relatively simple. Um, but there was a lot of information in that. And um, what I didn't talk about was the, uh, I'm loving these magnets. Now, these are the high-strength silver magnets that you get from the Home Depot. They're eight. 95 for uh, three of them. Oh, the neodymium. Neodymium. Oh, yeah. listen to you. That is that Klingon neodymium? It's, is that the... it's called magnets that actually work. Oh. Magnets. So we've done a Those lift out section magnets. on you, the layout. I think designed originally for uh, use on hard drives, that sort of really? thing. Yeah. Huh. We did a lift, lift out section over there on the narrow gauge stuff. I've shown that on how to use these magnets to hold the part of the layout in place. Heck, we glued an entire N scale layout. Oh, those together are the ones you. Oh, yes. Using yes, the yes. magnets. And yep. I held the N scale layout up in my hand and was swinging it around. Okay, here's where I'm going with this. I needed to be able to get to the squirrel cage blower on there to clean out the fins because the fins always are the part that, through either humidity or the paint or anything else, they always get <coughs> kind of filled. Right. And it mm -hmm. loses its suction. So you've got to have access to that. And I use these magnets to simply clip on the metal pipe out there. Whoop, on, off, oh, yeah, on, neat. off. It's perfect. No screws, easy access. Well, I'm, I have also been oiling the motor this week now that it's moved outside. It's, you know, I just wanted to make sure it was lubricated. And it's such a hassle to pull this grate off with two screws. So tonight, after the show, I'm going to put these magnets, glue them somehow to the outside of the box, and make it so it'll just simply clip. Perfect. Clip. Pull it, 
clip it, pull it, cl easy access. Yeah. No, no hinges, no fuss, no muss. Probably could have done it with Velcro. Yeah. But quick follow up. This week I came up with some new That's ideas. more high tech. Yeah. To simplify it. And I know, right? They don't have rare earth Velcro. You know what? Hold this in your hand. This is like old industry. This is actually stamped metal. Look at there. Remember when all of our toys were stamped Those metal? Those were the days. And cast? Yep. 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 So many toys at the dime store. It was called a five and ten store. Back when trains were steam. Now they're a dollar store, or two dollar store. Or five. Yeah. Soon yeah. it'll be the twenty dollar store. Right, right. <laughs> oh God. Okay. And nothing's track. a dollar anymore. It's no. Like, yeah. no. Even at the dollar store. Yeah. It's it not. says everything's a dollar, but nothing's a dollar. At by the way, though, at Cast they did have barrels of old fashioned candy, and it was ten pieces for one dollar. Oh, there you go. Okay, I want some candy. Yeah. I have a feeling that the show is over because I think we've come to the end. Well, I did. I did want to mention one more thing, and that was, uh, you know, not all of us are in our basements doing model trains all the time. Uh, you know, on this last this last Thursday and this last weekend, we had the rare opportunity at this latitude in St. Louis. Uh, to see the Northern Lights, oh. Aurora Borealis. Oh, you said yeah. you were going to talk about that. I didn't yeah. see it. The city was in the way. <laughs> yeah, the city was in the way. We went. We actually went west to town to Grace Summit, and there there were enough uh, quasi flat areas with a clear view to the north sky, uh, limited tree line, um, that we could actually uh, make out a good view. And at about nine fifteen p.m., I I'd uh, gone out there with uh, Allison and with the girls. And a couple yeah. of their friends from the neighborhood. Cool. And everyone was complaining because we'd been out there for 15 minutes, hadn't seen anything yet. And the kids were getting rowdy. rowdy. Allison was getting grumpy. She said, okay, let's go home. And I said, 10 more minutes? No, we don't have 10 more minutes. And then as soon as, I'd, as, soon as she said that, then it started. Okay. Just this absolutely beautiful uh, display that you could see with the naked eye. Um, the reds, the greens, the whites. Just and they were quiet sort of the, yeah. then, weren't they? They were quiet, and all of a sudden everyone knew why we were there. Um, it was ex absolutely beautiful, and I'm sharing photos right now. You are? Um, that I, that well I will done, send. man. Well done. Edit. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you talk about the NMRA thing? I did not yet. Talk about this real quick, because there's something that you really wanted to discuss tonight, and in fact, it's part of the reason you came here. Well, that's true. Um I came here to check out which sport coat you're going to be wearing tonight, but that's a nice one. I like that one. Yeah. I've been wearing this sport coat since we started doing the show. It's it's a classic. I know. You Almost should wash every it for episode. a change. I've never, <laughs> I've never washed it. This has got the original dirt on it from show number one. <laughs> Take show it number to the one, that's, been, that's a lot of water on a bridge. This is a lot of northern it. lights up in the sky. And underneath <laughs> it, I've got my Denny Yelzma. Ta-da. Very nice. Okay, yeah, good job. coat is got a microphone on it. And it there you a, go. There you go. All right, so. So the NMRA show, the uh, Gateway Division. Okay. NMRA Fall Meet, our local Gateway Division annual event is coming up November the 2nd yes. at the VFW okay. in Collinsville, Illinois on Vandalia Street. Okay. All right. And uh, we secured a food truck. That's going to be very exciting. Oh, score. The, what kind? The best worst food truck. So it's W U R S T. So it's a German food truck. Uh, pork steaks, hot dogs, bratwurst. Right. On and on. Yeah, yeah. But we have uh, some very cool events. We have, I believe, right now about twenty-seven vendor tables. We have four or five clinics that are going to be. We call them presentations. Actually, it's not really a clinic. It's an ongoing demonstration of some weathering and some other items. We have uh, the typical contests with a twist. So this year we have participation prizes for the contests. What that means, if you bring one model, you get a door prize ticket for special door prizes okay. just for contest entries. You bring 10 models, you get 10 tickets. If you're the only guy who brings something in the maintenance away category, you're going to get a prize whether you win anything or not. And those, hmm. are, those are popular vote contests. But for some of those prizes, we have some... Power, uh, Micromark power tools, some very cool stuff. We oh, have a nice. couple sound locomotives in door prize. We got a fantastic selection of door prize this year. We have HO Fremo layout at the Collinsville VFW and the N Track modular layout. We have K10 open that night for visitors. Oh, yeah. And we have 
uh, Tony and Joe Pellegrino's um, oh, nice ICG layout. Alton Division. Yep. Yes, I have seen photos well. of that. It has come a long way in the past couple yes. of years. Yes, I've been fortunate enough to run on it uh, a time or two. It runs fantastic, very realistic. Oh, yes. It really gives you that feel of rail fanning a real railroad. So that's a great series of layouts to see, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. This NMRA show that he's talking about is our local show, and they always had it around November. When is it this year? November 2nd. So it was always in November. Yep. When I had the job in high school at the hardware store, I would tell them a year in advance I wanted those days off. And they'd say no. I actually got told no after asking for a year. That's when I started looking at a different job. Um, long story short, <laughs> I... I, my first show was 1978 or 1979, and they were being held over at Lindbergh High School back then. Yep. And it was my under. It was it was the internet to me. It was the way I met everybody in sure. town. It was the way I went from being the high school model railroad kind of to myself person to finding out that there was a world out there of other people that liked the same thing I liked. Right, and people you could go up to and say, hey, James, how'd, how'd you do that? It was Tell amazing. how you did that. And or now you do that on the Internet. I right. met you at one of the shows back in the 70s or early 80s. I think it was Probably still at the in Viking. the late 70s. At the Viking, Probably at Correct. the Viking. Probably at the Viking. Because you had entered a photo contest, and I was all hot to bother now. I was starting to take pictures outside. Mind you, this is probably just at high school or senior year or a little bit, maybe a year after. I shot these photos in the backyard of the same house here because I went to high school here. Um, and I entered it in the photo contest. I was so proud of it. It was an outdoor shot. Didn't even have a train in it. I'm probably showing it right now because I know I got it in the computer. Um, and then you entered a photo in that photo contest, too. I had no idea who you were, but you beat me. You won. Well, that I thought it sometimes. was a shoe-in when I got there. I thought, I got this mopped up easy. It's an outdoor shot. But um, I didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I say? So many the plot say, is thickening <laughs> here, folks. I, I got to say, I'm actually kind of, I'm actually kind of <laughs> proud of that because, Ken, you're a heck of a photographer. <laughs> you did. You beat me. And yeah. it really, you didn't give me a complex. I got over it. But yeah. I so remember that to today. Sometimes judging can be subjective. And I love you. You've become yeah. such good friends yeah. ever since. Yeah. And Miss, Mr. Washington yeah. helped, right? You were really, <laughs> we were both yeah. younger. Than, we're talking about 40 year, now 40 you're, years ago. You're substantially ago. older than I am, aren't you, Ken? Pro I'm 25. Yes. <laughs> I'm 25. Well, so I'm 65. You're I'll You're be gonna 60 be, in February. There you go. So that Rock explains and roll. it. But those were fun times. NCE power cab system. We're going to use it to run trains on the layout tonight. Actually, we're already running the UP train. turbine, So man. it's the other throttle yeah. that's running this train. But the fact is, check them out at the website. This is the Pro Cab. This is the big system. The smaller system is the one that we used on the N scale layout over there. That's where right. you could just plug the battery pack into it. This one actually comes with a command station. We hook it up to the computer. We program. We do all kinds of cool stuff. And there's a gentleman. I'm not ignoring you out there. I've been getting emails. He wants to be able to run our trains from his house. Oh. Evidently, he knows how to do this. A uh, very incredible person that has been emailing me on and I need I just I did see I didn't forget oh there's another thing I did forget the new what's neat.com website launched today no way. I don't know why I didn't open the show with this could we run the show today? backwards today Randy hook called me today said the website is launched Take a look at it and see if there's anything that needs to be changed or change any words. Holy cow. It's beautiful. So do you want to delay it's this beautiful. announcement? No, yeah, when you go to the when you go to the model section, there's pictures of all the models. It's not words anymore. You see well, the big every news, single man. model oh, that we've awesome. ever featured on this show. Like that thing right there, that beautiful thing from KR Models. So if you click on what's that called? The bullied. It's called the bullied locomotive. That was the guy that developed it. Yeah. Um, so you click on bullied and that pictures of that outdoor photography will be on that website. It's amazing. Yeah. Every single guest that's ever been on, you've been on there already. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yes. Wow, that's exciting. I can't believe you forgot I to bring that till now. All no. the best well, for last. Hey, that's put our is. ad for the NMRA fall meet on there. Oh, Perfect. there's a picture here of the information for the show that you're talking about. The show we're talking about, the NMRA yeah. November show here in St. Louis in Collinsville. There's a whole and here's Facebook the flyer page. on it, right? Yes, yeah, we pulled this fantastic. right off your Facebook page. 
and we could put it at the bottom of the screen and they could still read it while we're talking up here. I just, editing video is so much fun. You can put words in people's mouths. You are on the leading edge of te technology, bruh. I, I tell you what. I'm not. I'm having a hard <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, <bruh. laughs> The school asked me to show proof of, of land and where he, that he's living in here in, he goes to Oakville, right? You gotta live yeah. in Oakville to go to Oakville. And I couldn't figure out their website to save my life. I went up to the principal's office and I, I've been there before, believe me. But this time I had to go into the principal's office and say, I don't know how to do this. And they just looked at me like, you know. <laughs> don't blame the player, blame the game, bruh. All right. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of conversations we've been having down here all night. And I told you, let's oh, just turn man. on the cameras and let them roll. All the bras flying around are going to really bother my daughter if she's watching the show. And there's a dog How down here. embarrassing. Today. I know, right? All right. <laughs> best hobby in the world with some of the best people sitting all around me tonight and a lot of best people that aren't here tonight. Let's Miss them all. go yeah. run some trains. Right on. Right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we that need was to fun. do a thumbnail <laughs> shot. <laughs> Camera. Goodness um, gracious. Yes. I'll hold my family. That's yes. so cool. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a different kind of uh, family portrait. There should it? be like, a it's, it's, it is. There indeed. should be a mall store it is set indeed. up. I didn't talk about the what's neat box cars tonight. Oh, That's okay. God, you forgot. They've everything. heard us talk about them. So, so what about a diorama of your living room? <laughs> there, you know, there you go. With the Christmas scene. <laughs> Look I at, mean, yeah. seriously, that does open up. Yeah. It's a whole different world. Oh, right? yeah. There should be a mall store where you go to the mall and you walk out with your prints of your family. Okay, everybody look at that camera right there. We got to do a thumbnail and show some teeth right now. <laughs> and we have the thumbnail. Let that camera roll for 45 seconds. Our camera failed last week on the show. Right at the end of the show, the camera just quit. So that's just two video like cameras. We gotta, we gotta buy more cameras, man. We're, we're running down. We're running out of cameras. So I remember a story years ago where a guy took pictures of himself and his friends and stuff, and then they, he cut them they in just cut piece of cardboard yeah. and put them yeah. on the or steps of the train or stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, Malcolm so Furlow did that. In, was he the guy who did Malcolm that? Malcolm Furlow did that in Model Railroader Magazine. You know, that actually, guy was yeah. a freaking master. I love that guy. That guy he was passed away. Yeah, I know. <clears> um, relatively young guy, too. Wasn't I heard that Vic Roseman passed away about yes, a year ago. I couldn't believe it. I loved his stuff. No one.